Hey everyone and welcome! It has been a hot minute since we've had our live paint and slay because, you know, something happened like a new year. But we are back. It is <laughs> Friday and it is me, your host, B Muse. And as you can tell above me, it's not Lauren. We have the lovely Tanya to pass here with us today as our special painting gets. And I'm actually very excited for this because Tanya and I have had the pleasure of painting together before. Uh, so we're going to get to have some fun and we're painting some Modrons today. But before we get into painting, which is my favorite thing to do, uh, don't forget, if you haven't yet, you need to get yourself logged into the game after, oh, wrong way. after the stream. Okay, after you're done with us, you then go into Idle Champions, you log in for Midwinter, and you make sure you unlock yourself Fen, because Fen is now available and has joined the Black Dice Society in Idle Champions. So, I mean, I'm also going to point out this key art. How gorgeous does that look? It's amazing. Um, that's beautiful. I love the details in the sword too. If you haven't paid attention, pay attention to that because that's just awesomeness. But yeah, make sure you get yeah. in there, unlock Fen. And there are some really cool uh, skin and feet packs that are out along with it. You have the Beetle and Grim, the Vampire Hunter, Beetle and Grim uh, skin pack that you can get in game, as well as Barovia Visitor Voronika. Uh, her skin and feet pack is also floating around there because, you know, I think it's just too much fun that Fen and Voronika can hang out and do some things together in some special outfits. Just say it. <laughs> All oh, right. Uh, Voronika is like in my formation. I have everybody. And just it. When, whenever we are graced with Brother, Brother Uriah, we'll have the whole set. I, I tell, this is like my favorite Pokemon quest. Like I am trying to collect all of the Black Dice folks. So my formation nice. can have them all on there and going as I have it going in the background. That is my goal. That is goals right now. But that being said, let me just put that one to rest for now. But we're going to be painting this adorable little Modron buddy today. And uh, this is, again, as always, courtesy from WizKids. It's the D&D Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures line. They have a new set of Modrons. So there's actually another set of Modrons. This one is from the Wave 18 set. So it's actually two of them. There's two of them. Um, so you get the... Oh, I just dropped one of the bases. So you get the... Oh, no. The little, I think it's the Tridon, right? Is the name of the triangle shaped one. And I I'm desperately trying to remember what the cube shaped fellow is called, but you get both of these know. in the set together. Um, obviously the other one has escaped as well, but they're really fantastic minis for getting into the things and we're going to have some fun with them. Uh, so Tani has the same mini as well, but there's mm -hmm. also some other goodies that WizKids has sent us. So... Oh, yes. WizKids passed along this fantastic paint set. It's the Prismatic Paint Basic Starter Case. All the paints we are using is from this case. They sent one to me. They sent one to Tanya. Lauren has one, too. Don't worry. Lauren will have these, too. And they also sent along some brushes. So we'll be using this brush set as well. So the Prismatic Paint Paint Brushes. Why is that turning into a tongue twister for me? And as you can see, you have a nice little detail brush. You have a more multi-purpose brush. And then you have a lovely flat brush for dry brushing. So this is what we're going to be using in the stream today. Um, and I'm just going to give you a little heads up right now. Listen to the paint names as I say what we're going to be using. Because some of these paint names are 
just a little bit too much fun. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, that all being said, we're going to jump right into it, Tanya, if you're all set and ready to go. I am. I have my nice little array opening. Yay! All right. I'm super excited. So we're going to jump right into using sun yellow. And you also want to grab some pale flesh. All right. So we're going to take these two colors. And we're going to mix these together to create sort of a, a muddied, almost like a honey mustard yellow. Oh. Yeah. Now here's the real question. Can I open? This? I was just about to say, I have yet to open these oh bottles. My God. They're on tight, these caps. Um, This may be a challenge. Oh, no. I actually have, if I can reach it, I actually have a, what do you do call you it? Like a wrench. Oh, my gosh. I okay, the pale flesh nearby. was easier. The sun yellow, that was tight. Um, this, I can't get the sun yellow open. Yeah, the sun yellow was super tight for me. If you have like even a paper towel might be able to give you a little bit more of a grip. Okay, I've, the pale flesh wanted to open easily, which... Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah, that one, that one does not want to open. Wow. Oh my gosh. All right, if you uh, can't get your sun yellow open, you could always try um, gold yellow. It'll just be a little bit of a deeper color. Yeah... Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I have, this is a trick I did in the kitchen when I couldn't open something. Mm -hmm. I used the handles of a, uh, oop, that's not going to work a little too slippery. I used the handle of a pan opener. Oh, I'm going to use that one in real... mind. Yeah, I had a bottle and I don't know why it wouldn't open. Wow, the sun yellow really said no. Ooh. Well, I mean, at least you know, like, the paints are sealed securely. <laughs> uh, yes, so now let me see if I can find... Which yellow was it's it? It's gold yellow. It's like a tone darker. But you could definitely jump into that one. There we go. Let, yeah. Now let's see if I can open it. Here's to hoping. Wow, these are... I should have opened everything first oh, no. because nothing wants to open. Oh, no! Uh, I may step away and go grab an actual wrench. Okay. Oh, Lord. The thing, we're doing it live, folks. We the are. That's the fun thing know. about the live stream. That's still, this is still just a bit too bright. So I'm going to add a little bit more pale flesh to this one. Like I said, I'm going for a more muted yellow. But anyways. You don't know until you're live. Exactly. But chat, it's been a while. How have you been over the holiday break? I want to hear what y'all did for fun. Did anyone paint minis, first and foremost? Did anyone uh, paint some minis? I would love to know. So that. many. You did? Uh, yes. I, I was telling you in the pre-show that a friend has uh, both, I'm both going to thank and blame him as he cool. has gotten me into Warhammer. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, yeah. All right. So that's um, the I color we're aiming you. for. I... You're looking. <laughs> uh, okay. So we're aiming for this color swatch right here on my wrist, which is like I said, it's sort of like a honey mustard color. I like to use food references because um, it's one of those things that are easier for people to quickly identify. But let's see here. Uh, Gauntlet Blade. Didn't paint a mini, but did do a Garchomp model kit. I am not familiar with this. What is a Garchomp? That sounds like a Pokemon. Is it? Ooh, it sounds I very Pokemon-y. Pokemon. It is Pokemon. Okay, cool. I found a wrench. Yay. The things you don't think you'll need in your uh, crafting <laughs> right? space. Yeah. Think hammerhead shark mixed with a dragon. Ooh, that sounds cool. So is it like a model kit you assembled and put together? Because that sounds neat. All right, wow. I'm going to go Neither in. I'm going to start. Yellow. Do you have like just another yellow paint? I have so much paint across the room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I find this hilarious in a way. I... Oh my goodness. We're going for like what kind of yellow like a it's mustard like yellow? it's like a mustard yellow if you want to just grab a yellow that actually opens up for you <laughs> well this is the good part where uh all the warhammer paints there you go because they just have a pop lid oh 
my gosh. I have never. That is too funny. I have never had that happen where the bottle just is like, nope. Both yellows were like, nah. They just said, no, we're not doing, we're not playing at all. Um, so yeah, once you have that yellow, what I'm doing is I'm going in and I'm putting this on like what will be the face. There's three of them. There's three faces. And actually what's fun mm -hmm. is the three faces each have sort of a different expression with the mouth. So there's one that's sort of a closed mouth. There's one that's sort of like a grin or sneering, depending on how you want to interpret it. And then there's one that's just sort of a neutral expression. Okay. Yeah, but we're going to be yeah. painting in all of the faces. And if you get the yellow on, like, the eyeballs and the mouth, that's okay, because those are details we're going to be addressing later on. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, I yellow am is no paint for you, says the yellow. Basically. So, luckily, I have a billion bottles of paint around here, because I've gotten back into mini painting. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I just grabbed a trio yellow off the shelf. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. But I did. Yeah. Couple, That'll work. A couple drops of pale flesh. Yeah, I may have to like, I have to look up or ask for tips on how to uh, get stubborn little paint <laughs> bottles open. If you have um, like a silicon pad of some sort, that will absolutely uh, help grip. Cause I have like a, um, like a trivet in my kitchen. Oh yeah. I've actually got, um, that's still a little bright. I'm going to add a couple more drops of pale yeah, flesh. Yeah. You'll, you'll want more of the pale flesh to the yellow. That's for sure. And Rory is coming to say hello to everyone. For those Hi Rory. Who, who the little cat is. This is my little Hi, girl, buddy. Rory. She likes to, uh -huh. um, literally sit pretty on my lap as we hang out together. <laughs> Can you put it's your like, head I down, Miss Thing? To. Oh, she tries. She tries to participate. Oh, Aw, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, a friend of mine who, the same friend who got me into um, the Warhammer stuff by sending me uh, a gift a gift of a starter set. Mm -hmm. His dog and his cat often try to join in on the, on the stream. Yeah, I think if there's something about pets and painting minis where it's just almost like they literally go, not not literally, but they go hand in hand. Absolutely. All right, there we go. Finally got some yellow going over Yay. here. Yay. All right, so this is with the one face painted up. And like I said, don't worry too much about it being perfectly neat because oh, this is the I... base color. <laughs> if I worried about my minis being perfectly neat, I would never actually play them. <laughs> okay so let me tell you <laughs> what did you start painting then over the break um so i have a a bah not a bahamut wow i've been watching too much final fantasy <laughs> a hydra that came with the body and the head separate so i did that finally oh um i got it from a lovely Etsy shop named mm -hmm. crazy bridge craft and i can get a link uh, a little break and they've got a lot of fantasy they've got a lot of um sci-fi minis mm -hmm. uh gerard the mint gerard the witch hunter Ooh. aka legally distinct gerald or yes Rivia. not to be confused with <laughs> um and a lovely jormungander Ooh. uh i don't I, I don't know if i treated the jormungander but that was in six pieces, and it basically sits on its base is waves and a ship that broke into. Okay. And a bunch of Warhammer. Very cool. All right. Let me see here. All right. One more face for this buddy. And by the way, chat, we have the wonderful moderators, Sean and Mars, with us today to help out in the chat. If you have any questions for us, don't forget to jump in and in caps. So it's easier to see, type in question, colon, and your question. Very straightforward. And they will collect those questions and pop them into our question document as well. And I will, I am, I'm on deck for that today. I will jump in and take a look at the questions document. 
to see if we have any questions that I may have missed. While Tanya and I have fun painting these little dude. So I have a question. Yeah. You know, in, in playing Idol Champions and mm -hmm. looking into it more, people always talk about Modron course. I had no idea what a Modron was until we showed up. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I was like, and I would just always go, what is a Modron What's a Modron? Core? Yeah, they're these fun little, um, they look mechanical, but I believe they're organic, essentially, um, uh, creatures. I am honestly not familiar with them, like the lore and everything, like vaguely, but I have, I have encountered one. I think I encountered it in a game. It was, um, oh, what's that one in Chultz that I am blanking on? It's like the official game that takes place in Chultz. Oh, Tomb of Annihilation. I think I, yes. Yes. So it was a Tomb of Annihilation game that I finally encountered one. <laughs> I've never, ever in all my time playing have ever encountered one. Um, so yes, they're bio-organic robots. So see, they, there we go. Um, but yeah, so I too am not as familiar with these as other creatures. But yeah, they are definitely an element that uh, you'll hear people talk about in Idol Champions all the time. For sure. They look fascinating. Yeah. Uh, they... And I typed it in chat. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I know I typed in chat, but I was answering Devil Crayon. Uh, I was gifted the command starter um, for... And see, it's, it, they get you because that the starter set snaps together. Mm-hmm. Everything else has to glue together. Oh. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, I bought the Black Templar set. It is my when I am more advanced, but I already have it. Mm-hmm. Because my friendly local game store carries a lot of Warhammer stuff. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I have um, checked out some Warhammer minis myself, but it's also time. <laughs> And the fact I that I have a collection that. of other minis that Fuck. I really should address first. Um, yeah, but there are some Warhammer ones that are really pretty cool looking that I would love to get my hands on. Uh, but this is oh, where I absolutely. am with the face all painted up. Both well, faces, I should say. Um, and then what we'll do is we're going to shift over to Leather Brown. And we're going to okay. paint all the bits and bobs that would be metallic in detail. So like this edging uh, here, the arms, the legs, the hands, we're all going to paint that leather brown. Um, okay, so this doesn't go open, for... I've got it. Yeah, this it opened. Open. It opened good. I was going to say, if this doesn't open, then we need to figure out a way to get your bottles opened. <laughs> no, it's just the yellow. The yellow said absolutely not today. How bizarre. Oh, no, I've, I've actually bought a set of, of paints that are supposed to look leather, like look like fabric Ooh. and leather. Yeah, that's cool. All right, and a little of this is going to go a theoretically long way. Hold on, I've got a Yeah, I only put a few drops in. But I... Um, oh, should I paint at the top of the Modron's head yellow? If you want to paint it yellow, you can. I'm sort of treating that as it's not where the face is, so I'm going to paint that okay. leather brown. It's okay. sort of up to you. No, I left it open. I wasn't sure if it counted as part of that. I didn't translate it that way, honestly. So, okay. and actually the, well, the packaging doesn't show you the top of their head. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So yeah, you should be good. Now, the one thing I know with these is that like the more sides and features they have to them, the more advanced they are. And they're definitely like something that works on a hierarchy of who is more important than the other for Modrons. Oh, for, for the Modrons. Yeah. 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 Which is why there's another Modron that's like a big one. And you can kind of see what it looks like. If you look down at the bottom underneath the screen here, right down there, see the one that almost looks like a flower? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's like one of the bigger ones. Like, um, I guess be like a general of the army, if you kind of put it that way. But yeah, okay. so it's, they're, they're neat. Like I said, I've, I've perused their background before in the past. But because they have never, well, except for that one time, come up in my gameplay... I'm like, yeah, Modrons, they're cute. They have many sides. They are different shapes and stuff. It's fun. Yeah, I have never um, been in a game where Modrons have been a thing. So. Yep. So there you go. 
Right. Uh, someone asked for the skew for the minis. The skew. Oh, that's very easy. Hold on. The skew is going to be for WizKids. And this is something you can get off of dndmini.com. This is something you can get off of shop.wizkids.com. Or you can go to your friendly local game store. But if you're ever looking for the skew on the WizKids minis, it's right there. 90422 is what you want. Okay. And this is wave 18. Uh, ooh, I have to be careful. I almost painted over some yellow. Oops. Yes. Sneaky little Modron. Yeah, I'm using the um, little multi-purpose brush that came in the prismatic paint kit. I am. Set, I should say. To get this painted up. If need be, there is a smaller detail brush that I could always jump over to. Yeah, I just, I happened to look away for a split second to look at chat. And mm -hmm. that's when I almost got. Yeah. Uh, now, there are these little corner tip pieces right here mm -hmm. you see that tanya i'm gonna yeah. leave those um unpainted brown because we're gonna go back in with some black just to oh, kind of give them I... like a cap action but if you want to paint those brown you can paint those brown that's not a okay. problem at all well i painted them brown just on the top i can yeah. leave them alone on the corner. oh yeah the top kind of has like a very thin edge bit right there so we can definitely work with that that's not a problem at all Hey, speak of the pirate and he appears. Uh, painting Hi. pirate who just showed up. Um, is, is who to thank slash blame for me getting into Warhammer. And I'm going to take the opportunity, because I am always saying, please go check out other mini painters. Don't just like hang out here with me if you're learning how to paint minis. It's always great to check out other artists. Right now, make sure you follow Painting Pirate so you have another mini painter you can check out when they are painting. Okay. That is a sincere request, not a command. <laughs> yeah. But definitely. Wow. Do. You're hmm? not a monster. You're an excellent friend, pirate. There you go. He, the joke has now become I'm a monster for introducing you to Warhammer. I mean, monster's a strong word. Pirates does this all the time, and I, I always do a small fuss at him. Mm hmm. <laughs> nothing wrong with a small fuss though let's see here um if it's on youtube champions of lord did an episode on the modrons oh fantastic all right so go in uh if if it's still on youtube i'm not sure off the top of my head but that was something that was covered that's good to know thank you devil cran yeah i'm i'm very carefully getting the leggies yeah we're gonna be doing some brown work for a little bit because uh there's a lot of area to cover yeah, I don't know when I started saying leggy. I think I can I like blame it. Greg Tito. That makes sense. Yep. Oh my god, painting with Greg is a trip. Is it? Yes. Uh, well, I did that Red Slot uh, paint kit with him and Shelly oh, that one fun. time. And we got to the rear end of the slot, and Greg just was beside himself. It's like, Wait, what what can I call this part of the slot? I don't know if I can say butt on <laughs> channel. I'm like you can say oh butt. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. That yeah. that's a Greg that's a Gregism. It is completely a Gregism. But no, totally, totally fun to paint with. Um definitely got into it. As did Shelly. It was her first time painting a mini. So that really? Was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to do with her. Um, also if I'm leaning out of frame, someone please tell me because I'm sure you do this V and I know oh, pirate wow. does it too to where you just start leaning and you don't mm -hmm. realize until you're like all the way like out of frame. And you're like, Oh, sorry. Yep. Oh, I do that all the time. I try and like stop and like hold the mini in frame every so often and in focus. But, and we've said this before, Lauren and I, we every so often have to move to kind of get the mini to the light where we need it to be or to the angle we need to reach. And if I absolutely have to pull this out from under camera and we're like, okay, I'm going out of frame. Uh, simply because there yeah. are times where painting minis, you got to either bring them in closer, take it from a different angle, and having a camera rig right in front of you doesn't always work very well. Yeah. I'm actually um, still on the hunt for a better camera for my mini setup. Oh, yeah. I use uh, the yeah. uh, Logitech Brio. That's so, what I use too, but there's know. a, there's a, better version of the brio oh that's good to know uh there's a 
4K, like proper 4K version of the Brio Ooh. out there. I like it. So Good to know. I shall have to research it. Uh, I need to look into like I I like my Brio as mm -hmm. is, but I always know that the the camera work when I'm doing minis can probably be sharper and mm -hmm. I um like with the DSLR I have way more control for the face cam than I do right. for anything else. Yeah. Um that is definitely fair. I'm edging around the face first because that's like the most finicky part. Oh address. really? I yeah. I feel like the I feel like the legs and feet are going to be more finicky because of the angle. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. And it's also just me. I did grab an angled brush though, just in case. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. Uh, because there's some minis where it's like they're amazing. They'll look great once they're done. Mm -hmm. but there's always that one corner. Mm -hmm. where you cuss everyone and everything mm -hmm. because of the awkward angle you need to hold it to get in there yep yep that is absolutely a thing that happens okay so uh, for so our chat mm -hmm. how long have you been painting minis uh seriously probably over the last year i got back into it Previously, mm -hmm. probably when I was in high school, when cool. I could. So off and on for here and there type of thing. Um, and I should also disclose hashtag sponsored. I am sponsored by Logitech. So uh, I, the Brio I have, I bought because I've had it that long that I bought it well before I was sponsored. Yeah. yeah. But hashtag sponsored when I mentioned Logitech products. Oh, Belvin's Bell's one said four months. What was that? Bell's one said months. four months. Oh, lovely Bell's win. So I am I'm very familiar with all the logic products. I think that's great though. I mean I've always gravitated towards Logitech and I am not sponsored. I just enjoy what they do. <laughs> Hi Mandy. Hello. Does watching other people paint count? I mean, I think that's an interest in mini painting. Sure. <laughs> painting pirate uh, since teenager. And then seriously, a few years ago. You know, that's not an uncommon story. There are people who sort of like, oh, I dabbled for a little bit, stepped away, and then I got more into it later on. So I'm I think not for surprised. a lot of us, yeah, it's the ability to have more income to do this because it's not a cheap hobby. Yeah. If you get into like the very specialized supplies and everything like that, yeah, there's definitely some time, money, and dedication that goes into mini painting for sure. In that respect. Um, that's why I always say if you're just getting into the hobby and you're just wanting to figure out if it is for you, it is okay to use things like craft paint from the craft stores that are like this four ounce bottle for 50 cents and things like that, because that will give you a taste of what it's like to paint minis. And then if you want to, you can start branching out and get things like this prismatic set and everything like that, and really start adding to your um, collection of mini painting accoutrement for sure. Yeah. Because, you know, like, getting seriously into it and deciding, okay, I'm really going to do this. Yeah. Realizing how much, how very easily you can walk into your local game store or craft store and spend. Oh, yeah. You know. Then when they give you the total, you're like, I'm sorry, how much? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there are definitely some, um, especially, like, unique and custom minis that are created by third parties that are just absolutely stunning. And the price tag shows the work and the care and the dedication that goes into the creation of these minis. Yeah, so. uh, Pirate actually picked up some Kingdom Death, and I know those are Ooh. on the higher end. Yeah. Not the full game, but still mm -hmm. even just the individual minis. Yep. The exactly. detail on them is amazing. Oh, Modron, why can't I see your little foot? <laughs> 
I'm trying to figure out if that's like the whole foot or if they're like on something. Oh, let's see. Um, so should I basically like paint the whole thing brown? Yeah, you can paint the whole thing brown. And then because we're doing the base in a little bit, we could always edge around where if it wasn't supposed to be brown, you'll be okay. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about that. And there is a... This is what I get for having Rory jump up on my lap. There's a cat hair stuck. There we go. Oh, no. <laughs> um, I'm also play. like bifocal years old. So mm. I have new contacts that are like basically bifocal contacts. And it's so weird. Oh, how are they working out for you? Um, It's interesting. Reading is has been a challenge because uh -huh. while they are like multifocal, I should say multifocal, not bifocal. Mm -hmm. Um. My prescription is a little different. Interesting. And I actually had to swap them oh. for actually being able to read. So, and this is a weird change of topic, but it, it no, it's fine. I mean, it's all anything. relevant. Yeah. Um, my right side has always been a little stronger prescription. Uh huh. But for these multifocals, I had to swap, and I put the weaker one in the left in the right eye. Oh. And actually, I was able to read a lot better. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah, so like on on like the computer screen on my phone, I was getting like a weird blurry halo effect mm -hmm. for for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I went in because I was like, I don't think these are working. Hmm. And uh, they wanted to do a trial since before I was not wearing this brand. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, wow, getting older really sucks. Yeah. <laughs> things crop up you're like i don't remember that but yeah i suppose that's going to be a thing now isn't it <laughs> yeah it's one of those things of i know i need to go to the eye doctor every year but then the sticker shock mm -hmm. yep it is a thing i have to go in I, february I, yeah well after my last visit i was like dang luxury orbs <laughs> <laughs> That's what it feels like. Right. I, I know some of us. Yeah. I think yeah. some of us call our teeth luxury bones because of how much they cost. Right. Let's see here. I am the slowest painter. No, it's totally okay. These these have a lot of little details to it too, which is sort of takes a little bit longer as a result. I know. I'm also trying to be like careful. Mm -hmm. not like you know nitpicky get nothing like not coloring outside the lines careful right. but i should have grabbed a paint handle i was not thinking yeah i um Maybe this one's from redgrass right. games it's actually i like it a lot it's ergonomic and you can spin it oh nice yeah the only thing is i have to be careful of how close i get it to my mic not my mic my uh, camera arm because it's magnetic oh. And oh, my is it? arm is metallic. So, yes. Oh. If you hear a thunk and my camera's vibrating, it's because, uh, yeah, my handle decided to engage. Yeah, really uh, Pirate. Like yeah, I think you and Pirate both have uh, sung praises of Red Grass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like their supplies. It's good stuff. Uh, and I have my a wet palette. palette. Yeah. Yep. It's finally on the way. Oh, lovely. It only took several months. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Well, I think there's still a mail strike in the UK. Oh, that might very much do it. <laughs> that could very well do it. All right, let's see here. I'm jumping back over to looking at the chat. Painting Pirate says, as it just scrolled out, come back. 100% of the big YouTube mini painters did a big bracket analyzing the paints in the cheap Apple Barrel $1 craft store acrylic stick. Hey, I can vouch for that. I've been using those paints for over five years now. Um, so yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all that the craft the uh, Apple Barrel craft paints did well. Except watch out for the yellow ones. Those can kind of be streaky. I have found that when doing for many paintings. I was trying to scroll back up and see chat because someone yeah. said someone, oh, Vampire talked about uh, Vampire was talking about uh, painting minis because they want a paint kit and a Twitch stream. That they what? Can you say that one more time? They won a paint kit and a Twitch stream. Oh. Uh, 
And then I was just wondering what they said because Crafter brought up 3D printing. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, 3D which... printing is a lot of fun to get into, especially if you like painting minis. Uh, yeah. Just keep in mind that is a separate hobby that overlaps into mini painting. Let me put it that way. It does, but uh, what a lot of people don't seem to realize is that if you want to print your own minis, you need a resin printer. Yes, you do. Uh, FPM or the ones that use the spools of PLA will not give you the detail you want on a mini. No, you get the striations too to worry about big time. So resin is definitely the way to go for your 3D mini painted mini. Yeah, yeah 3D mini printing. Not painting. I, I have painting. a 3D printer. Uh-huh. Um, and it does do great detail. It's the new one from Anker Make. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is very fast. I printed a whole Phoenix in four hours. Ooh. Lovely. Yeah, it's fun, but it's also, it's very easy to turn into a gearhead with your printer. Mm-hmm. Because my last one uh, that I just sold to a friend, uh, I modded that heavily. Mm-hmm. Like replace the um, hot end, the, the filament feeder. Oh wow! Yes, I, I turned into a little gearhead with this printer. <laughs> Come on, Mojang. Oh, what was that on MTV? Pimp your ride. Remember that? Yes. Yeah. So you, you pimped your printer? <laughs> Absolutely. Because uh, the so the Ender Creelty line is actually a good line, especially for beginners. Uh huh. Um, and they do make a beginner resin printer. I just live in an apartment, so I am not, I don't have the space or Those the are... ability to air out yeah. if I did resin printing. Yeah, that is definitely, like I said, 3D printing is a hobby in itself to make sure you're taking the right safety precautions. You have the space, the time, the tools, the programming, the literal computer space even uh to get it all done yeah yeah i will send you a picture of how much space this 3d printer takes up on my craft table i'd love to see that it Sounds is good a big yeah um i mean but it's fun i enjoy it and so many people are so talented mm -hmm. and do 3d models of just about anything oh god yeah there are a lot of people out there who will even like just share files with anyone uh, thingiverse.com is where I get a lot of my free STLs, mm -hmm. but I also um, pay for mini, uh, what, mini maker something. It's, it ends with an F and I can't remember what the F is for. I'm not familiar with that one, to be honest. Otherwise, I would happily try and help you out there. Yeah, uh, it, it's DJ Knight's fault. No, of course. Doesn't. Of course. Oh my gosh. When DJ was printing out all those things with the rock's head on it. <gasps> Man. <laughs> that. Some of that stuff was just getting downright creepy. Stuff and nightmares. Yeah, it was. Like the one but that was, that was just, it an octopus. It was an octopus. He printed an Eevee with the rock's head on it, like a Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, DJ, please stop. Yeah. Please. I will oh, my mini factory? Is that it? Thank you. Thank you, Kay Asad. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What I was wrong with the rock to put this Brian? Would... <laughs> Brian. You Brian. Say that. Did you you, you would... saw that? No, sir. That was the stuff. I mean it was just <laughs> Brian Cortijo. Yep. How dare. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll see you at some point this year and give you a stare in person. <laughs> also, let me know if you can hear me because I'm not used to a directional mic at all. Yeah, every so often you get a little softer, but I understand it's because you're painting the mini. Uh, I've had this thing for months. I still am not used to a directional microphone. Yeah. All right, let me clean off my brush and get a little bit more. He says he did. It was disturbing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then we're in agreement. <laughs> I love how three of my friends are in chat. They all know me that well. Uh-huh. 
So is there a 3D mini print project you have in mind that you're looking forward to working on or that you like just took care of doing type of thing? Um, so a friend and community member uh, works at a like industrial 3D printing house. Ooh. And I've actually got it in front of me. They printed upscaled like 200% versions of the Rivals STLs that we got from Eldritch oh, Foundry. Cool. So I of the original five, I've got one of each. So I've got um, Ashborn, Knock Knock, Shaka, mm -hmm. Perrin, Celeste, and Rin. Ooh. Uh, most of them are on the table, but I've got uh, Ashborn here on the desk. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure I need to prime them though. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. It just took. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's cool. So these are like nice, like showpiece size where I yeah. can see them. Oh, very nice. I like it. Um, and hopefully I'll see Serena next week. So, mm -hmm. um, because I asked her if she wanted, I will. I let her know I'd be in town. And I got to see her on another LA trip. So I'm hoping to get to mm -hmm. see her this time. Oh, nice. Um, and I told her, I said, I'd paint it in military. She's like, I want to paint it myself. I'm like, oh, oh okay. awesome. Yeah. That's very cool. I I miss playing uh, d d with them. Yeah. All right. So we have a question. What do I use instead of the apple barrel yellow? Okay. You can still use the apple barrel yellow. There is a trick you can do to it to help it to keep from being so streaky. You actually want to start off with a uh, beige paint and add the yellow into it. So it will sort of dull the yellow a little bit, but the beige acts as a better base in the yellow to give it a more consistent coverage. So that's what you can do with those uh, craft paints. If you find your yellow is getting streaky, add a touch of a like a rich beige into it and it should help with that one. So that question was for the Frapster and now I want a cappuccino. Look, <laughs> I will always take coffee. Uh-huh. I switched I actually to the couldn't... detail brush. What was that? You switched? I actually switched to the detail because um, these little like bits on the faces of the Modron were hard mm. to get with the other brush for me. Totally fair. That's why we have all these brushes ready and available. Uh, true story. I couldn't drink coffee for a while. Oh, it no. Was killing my stomach. And I used to drink coffee all the time. Like, love coffee, love my espresso, love my cappuccino. I, I grew up in an Italian family. Of course, I'm going to like coffee. Um, but then it really started, like, hurting my stomach, like, doubled over in pain, hurting my stomach. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, apparently, the human body likes to change its mind every seven years or so. <laughs> so. Oh, so. So the doctor's like, hey, you could always try some of these foods that haven't been nice to you in the past and see if you can tolerate them again. So I tried drinking coffee again. I can have coffee again. <laughs> Yay. I am so happy. But here's the funny thing, because I tried it over the break. So I had um, like a big old cup of coffee one day. I was mm -hmm. buzzing around until 3 a.m. <laughs> because my system wasn't used to the caffeine. <laughs> Oh, no. It was bad. It was bad. I was awake from having, I think it was like, this. it probably would have been like two cups of coffee because of the size of the mug. But yeah. So good news is oh, I can no. drink coffee. Bad news is I need to be careful with just how much. Yeah. After going to school, after going to college at night and working in the day, mm -hmm. I don't think coffee affects me that way anymore. You're not the first person to say that, you know. I have heard that before. I think I primarily drink coffee out of habit and for the taste. I mean, there could be worse reasons to drink coffee. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, look, another mini painter has joined the chat. I just saw. Hello, Panda. Thank you for joining us. I have this plug that does not want to leave me alone. Go away. And I need this more what? leather brown. A plug in my leather brown. Oh no. I just had to stab it. <laughs> it worked. Ouch, it if came. Only, if only stabbing things was always the best option. Oh god. <laughs> Look, there's sometimes a sharp implement is the only answer. I mean, I will neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> I mean, I am a guest. I can mistake. You can. <laughs> oh, too funny. 
Okay, so speaking speaking of sharp implement objects, we got to chatting about um, the equipment and everything for Fen when we were designing Fen for oh, the yeah. game. What did you think about having a sentient weapon? Um, in game or for idol? Oh, for gameplay, it was yeah. great. Although. B day voicing the pens, it was all sass all the time. Uh huh. And I was like, I'm gonna throw you in a river once I've killed the caller. <laughs> I mean, I I buried the pens mm -hmm. like twelve feet down in the dirt because oh my god, it would not shut up. Well, I mean, I remember when um you guys were in Koshmar, and Nepenthe was running his mouth, and I'm like, there's a very deep lake right over there. <laughs> Uh huh. You want to chuck it in? I'm good. Cause look, if oh. I was, I had already dug that hole with the soul by stealing the pens. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, you know, after I killed the caller, I don't need you. Right. You've served your purpose. Bye. Yeah, I'm and, always uh, curious. Go ahead. I know it was it was fun, but it was also just kind of like Dave, please stop. Please. Yeah, you're making me want to throw away the magical weapon that I need. Mm -hmm. And that's just it. I'm always curious because I have um I have a character have a has a bow that is basically uh, imbued with her mother's soul. So every so often the mother's voice will come through with it. Um, oh no! Yeah, luckily not too often. <laughs> but I'm always curious what others think about playing a weapon that sort of has sass and talks back and has, you know, thoughts and reactions and how it sort of affects how they would play or what they decide to do uh, as their character in the game. Actually, hmm. we did that a little bit with Celise. Mm -hmm. for, for the short time, she was running a level of Artificer. Her wedding band was enchanted. Ooh. And oh, would talk neat. to her, but nobody else could hear it but her. Oh. Yeah, it made for some interesting one-sided conversation. Now, was was the wedding band connected to the significant other? Or was it the wedding band itself was its own entity? Um, The wedding band was its own entity, but because of her, like, still not being not grieving at that point because she had not gotten her revenge on Zaraj at that point. Mm -hmm. I I played it a little bit as if her conscience slash her wife would have disapproved of this course of action. Ooh. Oh that's cool. Uh yes yeah, so it was a lot of how dare you uh -huh. like oh honey you know I wouldn't want you to do this. Oh that's neat. I like that. Kind of like how you and DJ were playing uh, Veronica and Desmond when you were <laughs> in the store. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, also, kudos to you once more for the bamboozle of the show. Of, I'm having camera issues. I don't know what's happening. Suddenly, a Dark Lord appears. Yeah, that was such... Such a nerve-wracking night because um, at this point, like, Black Dice Society has been out for a while, so not a spoiler as well, because if you play the game at all champions, you know Vornik is a Dark Lord. Um, but at the time, the cast did not know that this was the plan all along. Um, so I was actually in Victoria doing a thing at the Codename Entertainment main office, and the particular episode was just like, oh, by the way, this is happening while you're out of town. So in a way, that worked out for us because y'all knew I was traveling. I'm like, oh, I'm not sure what the connection is going to be like at the hotel. Spoiler alert, it wasn't that bad. But I was able to use it as the guise of like, yeah, I can either have my voice or have the camera. I can't have both. So I figured at least you guys can still hear me and we can keep moving forward. And everyone was like, OK, makes sense. Totally get it. Not a problem. And then it was the fun of literally just, I have this fun little thing on my camera that flips down, flips up, just flipping that back up. And it was like, hello, everybody. I am your Dark Lord. And we were all Monica. like, excuse? 
The faces. Oh my god, your faces. Well, and, and I felt so goofy later because it's been staring at us in the key art from day one. Well, and yeah. none of us pick, picked up on it. Yeah, that was... First of all, Adam did a gorgeous job with that artwork. Um, but that artwork had been something I was dodging around and changing topics on numerous times <laughs> because people are like hey um isn't that you in the black dice society promo thing and this is before people knew i'd be on there as a player or guest type of situation I'm like no i don't think that looks like me you think that looks like me and then people what? realizing oh wait that's the three dark <laughs> words at the top that was fun yeah well i so every time i looked at the key art i was like Oh, well, we know that Voronika dies, just Undead Bride didn't think mm -hmm. I really did not cotton on. And I was like, how? How did none of us see this? I honestly, I thought one of you or a couple of you were going to start putting the things together and realizing. I thought, yeah, I thought Mark would get it of all of us. Well, Mark did know. <laughs> Mark already oh, knew. He did. He did. Yep. Uh, it was Mark and I and Jason okay. and B. Dave. We all knew. Oh, because he was playing Aslan. Got him. Yeah, because he was playing Aslan and he needed that context for some of our interactions in like the bonus footage and the cutscenes. Um, yeah, that was definitely a thing, but it was so much fun to pull off. And just to see your reactions was amazing. Oh, no, it was the best thing. And... I miss playing with oh. everyone. Yeah. I was a, Yeah. Well, because yesterday uh, when I was talking with Trevor on Idle Insights, mm -hmm. you know, I, I talked that up and I was talking up actually uh, DJ mm. because, you know, DJ was newer to yeah. the stream side of things. Yes. Wow, I found a whole patch I missed. Good job. Yeah, I'm kind of doing the same thing. I'm still working down the legs, and I'm like, oh, gosh. And then there's this little bit that I forgot. Do, do, uh -huh. do, do. It's basically in the corner where the legs join is where mm -hmm. I can find the spot. Yeah. Um, but DJ is a great RPer. Absolutely. And I feel like many of our strongest emotional scenes were him and you, him and B. Davis as, as uh, Armand. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. And honestly, um, playing in an RPG where there's a relationship involved, that is always something you have to be careful with and be conscientious of. I have been the most comfortable playing a relationship with someone, with DJ, than anyone ever. Because he's always been fantastic about it, so... Always a pro. Always a pleasure to work with. Yeah, uh, there's plans afoot for some stuff next month. Um, possibly for Black History Month Ooh. with with a sponsor. Nice. And um, DJ is definitely on my list of people I plan to reach out to. Oh, good. That's exciting. I look forward to seeing what you have uh, brewing behind the scenes. Well, I also just love his energy and his chaos. Oh, yeah. Like, he's chaotic. But not in a disruptive way. No. He's enthusiastic. For sure. Yeah. I'm here for that. Completely. <laughs> Awkwardish Panda was screaming in the office for the Voronika reveal. It's <laughs> fully startled the husband, the dogs, and one of the two cats. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, and thanks, Rand Ram. I'm glad you're enjoying the new skin for Voronika as well. Uh, can we... Oh my gosh. I am loving Fen's skin too, Vampiric Dark Lord Fen. That's a good look. I love it. I'm that, so happy with how it came out. That really is stunning. If you haven't checked that one out yet, go into the in-game store and look at uh, the theme pack for Fen. And you also get Izzy, the oh cutest God, Izzy's... little. Oh, he's so cute. So, how did you land on wanting to do that particular little bat? um i think it was in one of our meetings because you know i'd already had a chance to work with cne to bring a familiar to the game mm -hmm. take this and yeah. like there's an abundance of dogs cats other things oh yeah and, and i was trying to lean into her dump here 
heritage a bit, but also have something unique. Mm-hmm. And that's why I asked him. I was like, "Wait, vampire bat? Are there bats?" And you were like, "I don't think we have a yeah. bat." Yeah, that worked and out then, so darn well. And she's so cute. I want a little stuffy. Precious, right? Easy plushy, please. Request. <laughs> yes, I I would buy an Izzy plushie because bats unto themselves, I don't think are particularly cute, but the way she came out in the game. Oh, yeah. Like between the... Go ahead. I know, you go ahead. I was going to say, between like her click action and just the coloring and everything. Oh, my God. So darn cute. God, Modron, why must you have so many legs? Right? I'm like, okay, I'm I'm getting tired of arms and legs and shins and arm arm knuckles. No, what am I saying? I'm looking at knuckles. Whatever they are. Whatever these are. Yeah. There's like a lot find of like that grannies. One little white spot. And I'm like, come mm-hmm. on. Same. This, this would be the one time I wish well, I won't say the one time, but there's a lot of times I wish models detached from the base. Yes, agreed. There are definitely times it'd be great if you could just pop them off and then re-situate them after the fact. Um, Because I was working on some gargoyles, mm. uh, actually from Awkwardish Panda's uh, shop. Ooh. And they're sitting, you know, gargoyle style, kind of like these Modrons, and they're crouched. Mm-hmm. The angle I had to put that mini at to get every little nook and cranny... And basically make sure that the butt was was uh, fully painted. Mm-hmm. But if I've been able to pop it off the base. And this is a lot of minis, not just this one. Yeah. Or the gargoyle. Oh, yeah. No, there's many that are guilty of this. So while I may complain about minis where you need to assemble them, I mm-hmm. also can fully paint them before. They can be fully painted and then worry about assembling. Yeah. That is absolutely true. Oh, okay, oh come I'm, on. I might, might I'm be there. Done. Might. I'm almost there. Um, so what took you two hours to paint this mini? The leg. The legs and the arms, folks. The legs and the arms. <laughs> I'm also trying to make sure I don't hit the yellow by mistake, but I also still have some yellow left if I do. Mm-hmm. Need to. Yo, that's Dip good back least. into it. Yeah. Yeah. That helps well, it's also me. just the teeny details, like the small edges on minis has always been a slight problem for me. Yeah. I have never been a paint inside the lines kid, nor am I one as an adult. I mean, you can still at certain points paint outside the lines and then you do cleanup. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, how am I going to get to this angle? Oh, the fleet? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's why I grabbed a, an angled brush, but so far switching to idea. the detail brush has been okay. Oh, that's good. But I'm still seeing like little spots that mm-hmm. oh here's this one sixteenth of an inch dot I didn't cover in brown. Mm-hmm. Like here I gotta get to the backs of the legs here. Yeah, that's where I'm kind of struggling right now. And the hand, claw, whatever it yep. is. Yep. So basically, if you're painting this mini, get used to moving it around a lot. <laughs> a lot, a lot. That is for sure. I'm also touching up the top now that it's dried a little bit. Because oh, that makes sense. You know how you can tell, oh, this is a little streaky. Mm-hmm. There we I mean, go. the good news is we are doing a wash, so that'll help with some spaces if you, like, missed a little dot. That yeah. will help. Um, and we are going to do a little bit of dry brushing with a metallic to sort of change Ooh, the fun. appearance. Um, to kind of give it, like, a beat-up metal look. Oh, nice. I've never done dry brushing with a metallic. Oh, it's so much fun. It's, like, one of my favorite things to do with metals. So they don't look so pristine and perfectly shiny. Yeah, I actually, um, well, I didn't use a wash I when I painted the Jormungandr. Mm-hmm. I did silver. 
Ooh. And a white. Well, I started with a dark dry brush and I didn't like it. So I did a white dry brush. Mm -hmm. And then on selected areas, I used a corrosive technical paint. Ooh, very cool. All right. See, every time I, I think will... I'm there, I look in the camera and the camera's like, hey, psst, you missed a spot. <laughs> yeah, I'm holding it up by its little spears. Like, what else is missing? Yep. So here's my little Modron fellow. Yeah. Doo -doo -doo. Kind of. There's camera will actually focus. A little dot there and a little dot there. So we're Goodness. getting there. We are. Slowly. But I'm going to try to. I see a couple spots where I also miss with yellow. Mm. I'm going to try to. You know, like the very bottom of the, of the pyramid? Yeah. I clearly okay. missed the spot because it's it's tiny. He's wee. Hey, Zero. Also another uh mini I have I have learned so much from Zero Panda and Painting Pirate. That's awesome. That is always good when you can share and share alike. Okay, Mario, that dry out completely on me. You may have. Oh my god. God, pirate. What happened? He is punning. I mean, he knows I can't reach pun. him. <laughs> Don't encourage him. All right, I won't. I won't. I won't. I mean, it's too late. He's going to do it. <laughs> He's going to do it. Although we're always open to suggestions here at CNE because we do have one of, during our morning stand up, someone always has to tell a pun during their time in the meeting. So we can always collect and share. <laughs> Oh, just hang out in Pirates Chat. You'll have enough puns for a year in one month. Good to know. Oh, I did miss. I did miss. No, it wasn't. You know you're going to do more. The second you get a chance, you're going to do more. Uh-huh. He says that. But wait, there's more. Oh, Harvey's saying, I wondered if the, after the fact, Boronika would become a patron in Idol Champions. No, nope, she is a champion, not a patron. Although she kind of has like a little sub- patron-esque factor to her with the three little challenging bits put into getting her to transition from a ghost to a dark lord. I will say that. Why won't that? There we go. Oh, hey, pirate, you might have a package from me. Speaking of thing, Ooh. he's going to yell at me. Uh-oh. To be updated. All right, I think... I think we're good. <laughs> Another one? <laughs> so. Okay. So, so we. Pirate... Oh, go mm -hmm. ahead. I was going to say, so we got that done. Now we're going to move on to painting the spears and these little dippity doos at the top here. I don't know what the technical term would be for those in a mechanical thing. Mm. Um, so you're going to keep needing your leather brown, but you're also going to want some black pudding. That's that's a name for paint, certainly. It is a name. It's that's that's like I said, you're gonna notice some of these have fun little names. So with black pudding, we're gonna mix leather brown and black pudding together to oh, make sort of this of... deep uh, muddied brown. I'm gonna start off with equal parts. It's like a drop of leather brown to a drop of black pudding. A few drops escape, so that's okay. That's what we're getting. And then I'm going to blend those together with a safer brush and get those going. And that's going to go on to basically the handle of the spear here. And then we'll put it onto those tips at the top here. Is what we're going to uh, do with okay. this mixed up color. Okay, let me, let me grab that. The not technical brush. Where are you, brush? Do not want the detail brush. No, I'm laughing because um, Pirate did a charity stream, and mm -hmm. one of one of the things was if he hit a thousand dollars, he was going to do a cooking stream. Okay. Uh, Pirate infamously does not cook. Oh dear. Um, how dark should this be? Be like more black than brown. I'll do a swatch on my wrist, like that. So it's like a muddy brown color? Yeah, that's about what I got. I might need a drip more brown. Okay. I think I got two drops of the black and maybe oh, one drop yeah. 
of the of the leather you can brown. Definitely even it out then if you want to. Just a wee bit of the brown. Just a wee bit. I like our measurements in mini painting. <laughs> touch a dab a wee bit. Um and because Pirate infamously does not cook, he did not have a lot of the accoutrement you need. Oh no. And so Prax, who you know. Yes. She and I conspired and sent him a bunch of cookware. Uh-huh. But it, but Target apparently does not believe in mailing things together. In one No. So it's so the shenaniganry has arrived in four separate packages. <laughs> so it's it's a culinary ambush. <laughs> Basically. I love it. That's amazing. And because I placed the order, because I have Pirate's address. Uh -huh. I keep getting the shipping updates. Oh, Lord. Oh, too funny. And it's nothing bad. I almost no. Instacarted stuff there, though, while he was live. Oh, funny. I was like, that will distract him from actually cooking. So, yeah. so I'm waiting for him to come back and do a fuss. It was a very slow ambush, yes. Yeah, but sometimes those are the best ones. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, Praxmagoria Desmophoria, who mm -hmm. uh, you know and some folks in the chat know. Yeah. And Prax has like, you know, I could be a chef kind of kitchen. Ooh. Yes. So... Prax and I decided we're going to do <laughs> Hi Pirate huh? We love you Pirate It's always in love uh, You said the tips of the spear things were the handle The handle Okay. The tips we're going to paint is straight up black pudding The handle Okay so, the handles are mixed and then the tip is yeah, in black Yeah exactly and the tip is the curved part? Yes. So basically okay. from it's, it almost looks like a um, question mark. Got it. That's what we'll be painting. And just straight up uh, black pudding. Okay. No, but it, it would have been far more effective had one giant box of things just shown up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but Target, not knowing how to package things, apparently. Trips and yeah, and I was just like, this is the most inefficient way to mail things. Ship things. I mean, have you gotten those Amazon shipments every so often where it is a small object? It's tiny. Yeah. And it comes in a massive box and then just a whole bunch of plastic packing peanuts. Or not even the like yeah. the bag things, not the packing peanuts themselves, but like those yeah. bags. It's like, really? What what made this box worthy and a big box worthy? <laughs> that that? Was, yeah that was it's definitely... funnier but i also don't want you to actually be annoyed at us you right oh speaking of inefficiency uh pirate if you don't want me to tell the story feel free to tell me to shut up but uh someone got pirate a new chair but part of it there a very small part was broken on arrival oh you know, the chair is still usable, and you would think they would just send a whole, they would just send a replacement. Right. They sent a whole new chair. They what? They sent a whole other chair. He had to send the other one back. Oh, okay. But instead of just sending the small bit that was broken, mm -hmm. they replaced the whole chair. That's unreal. Because, again based on who made the purchase emails kept coming in like you're you're be prepared for your your chair and i'm like what what's going on yeah i was like huh. this makes no sense so shout out to herman miller but also they could have just sent the broken piece so thanks but also i mean i guess but what if that second chair had broken in transit Apparently that also happened to Devil Cran. 
had a broken headrest that could have been replaced on its own, but the company sent an entire new chair. So maybe it's just standard practice, I guess. I that's the most inefficient thing ever. That does surprise me. I mean, yeah, you get your new fixed chair. That's great. But yeah, it's surprising. Eek. I'm just like, why is that a thing you all did? Mm. Instead of just sending the small plastic piece instructions on how to replace it. Well, I mean, I guess there might be um, others who are not as familiar with how to do repairs or replace. So that might be why True. they just default. Um... True, but I just think it's hilarious that there's just this one small piece that needs to be fixed. Yeah. And suddenly, a chair. Mm-hmm. Oh no, Devil Crayon. What happened? Frustratingly, mine was a custom order and the replacement was slightly different. Ooh. You know, Dang that's it. a whole other story. Dang it. Oh, so you got me saying Dag Nabbit. <laughs> Good. I've started saying you noodle and blessings because of Eugenio. Oh, yes. Yep. Funny thing is, is now one of my uh, kiddos is starting to say Dagnabbit while they're playing video games. Really? Dagnabbit! <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I guess that's better than them cussing a lot. This is true. It's just so funny to hear the voice going, Dagnabbit! And knowing yep, that has and, uh... stemmed from my saying it because I keep hearing you say it. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Lady Luck in the chat, whenever you me go, well, that's because of her. Oh, love it. Love it. All right. Working on the splur. I am such a little mimic, though, that I don't even realize I'm doing that sometimes. I mean, that's fair. Especially if you spend a lot of time with the circle of friends. It definitely gets passed around. Between each other. It is. I'm trying to think of what Pirate says that I might have picked up. Although he just swears a lot, so I probably can't repeat it on this stream. Mm. I know my favorite swear can't be said on this stream. Yeah. You know what I'm thinking of, too. Yeah. It's good to hear a smile. <laughs> I know. I just love saying it. Yeah. Um, have you, it's that trend now where there are some parents who are like sitting their kids in front of the cameras, like, okay, you get this one chance to say this swear and you can go ahead and say the swear word and you're not going to get in trouble. Um, uh -uh. it's, like, Is it it's like going TikTok around on like, yeah, it's going around on TikTok and Instagram reels and everything like that, which, okay, I get it. It's funny the way some of the kids react and everything like that. Um, I laugh though because I have had this conversation with my own children. It's like, look, I know how old you are. I know you ride the bus. I also used to teach, so I know very well that you're hearing words on the bus at school that, you know, maybe aren't the nicest words to use all the time. Um, so I basically just left it. It's like, look, if you're going to swear, make sure you're not swearing around people who are, uh, you know, teachers, grandparents, other parents and things like that. If it's with your buddies, I understand it's going to happen and everything like that. Um, but they were so funny. They were almost like, hey, mom, you okay there? But I've learned a long time ago. There are some things worth fighting over. And their using swear words does not break the bank. It's one of those things like, it's just not worth it. Well, and they're going to do it anyway. And Might that's as just well. it. Yeah. You could stress over something that really in the long run is not worth stressing over. This thing, like you said, they're going to do it when they're not around you. Yeah. At the end of the day, cussing is not the worst thing they could do. Right? And I feel like people pearl clutch too much about, oh my god, my child swore. And I'm like, that's all you're worried about? I mean, really? send them that uh, study where it's like people who swear have a higher intelligence or something like that. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah.
But I do like hearing Dag Nabbit every so often. I do, and I also try to like just curb my language in general because sometimes I forget mm -hmm. that friends who watch the stream that have kids, right? Maybe the kids are around. Yeah. Um, and also, um, and this is not really. I don't know how relevant it is, but I played the demo for Forspoken before it comes out, which I think comes out in a week or so. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the comments a lot of people were making was that the main character, a young black woman from the Bronx, mm -hmm. swears too much. Ooh. What's and the definition of too much? In this case, probably any, and we know exactly why that is. Mm -hmm. Um. But I found that interesting that we have games where, you know, the lead white male protagonist oh, yeah. has a lot of choice words. Oh, uh, yeah. And no one has ever complained about that. Mm-hmm. Color me surprised. Yeah, I need a, just a wee bit more of this. Did you paint the bottom tip of the Modron with this, with this mix? You mean the bottom of the spears handle? Uh, no, the like the actual bottom. Oh, of the no, 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 because that doesn't have one of those attachment pieces. I just left that as okay. a the brown, the leather brown itself. Okay. okay. Plus, I was not about to try and get in there and angle that and make that all nice and even around the sides. I'm going to have to disagree with your dad. I am highly intelligent. Hmm? Uh, oh. no, Keyleth. I keep, Keyleth. I'm reading your name and I want to say Keyleth. Keyleth, so yeah. Badly. Yeah. Uh, da, da, da. Dad says the opposite. He thinks people have sort of low intelligence because they can't find a better word. Mm. No. Nope. And of course, you know. Everyone's going to have their own stance. By nature of anything. Well, there's absolutely an appropriate way to curse, and there's a way to do it very well and make people... There's mm -hmm. a way to curse and be very eloquent with it, I think. Mm -hmm. And absolutely. leave people very confused and befuddled. Oscar Wilde, folks. <laughs> I just start calling people leech walnuts. <laughs> Oh, God. You rube, you buffoon, you leech walnut. And not a <gasps> vulgar word in there, just everyday art. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I started saying son of a motherless goat when I wanted something for emphasis. But it wasn't oh, a swear, wow. but it felt like one. I mean, when you say that, you know, your father was a drunkard and your mother smelled of elderberries, mm -hmm. y'all know that's supposed to be a cuss. Mm hmm Exactly. But there's not a vulgar word in there. Nope. Elderberries are quite lovely. They are. It's also a gorgeous color. It is. All right. I am getting close to... Now I've found where I need to touch up the hands now that I finally got the the sword bit done. Mm -hmm. And also this corner of the top of the Modron that I missed. I was being way too careful. Yeah, this little Modron is taking up a little bit more time than I thought it would. Oh wow, it's already 315. Yeah. Like here I am in our in our pre-stream chat. I'm like, oh, you know, just in case I have the other one. Here's the other one. I have the other one lined up in case we need to keep going and we have some time left. Da -da 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 -da. Sure. Nope. Sure. The mini gods laughed at that comment. <laughs> Give me more time. <laughs> I mean, we've gotten quite a bit of it done. We have. We really have. We're making some good progress on it. If um, anything, I can always send you my um, notes for the little stuff that we might have left to finish. Yeah, because what I'm going to do is, now that I've gotten the, the handle and the, mm -hmm. the spear handle done, I'm going back and getting, like, the very teeny bit of the claw that I didn't touch. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to do the, the handles in black, since you said that would be black. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm going to go in with some black pudding now and just get the top portion of that spear. So there sort of that go. upside now down there's... question mark shape that that is. Well, now it actually looks like they're holding the spear. Because I was like being super careful with it so I wouldn't um, have to do too much going back and forth. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get that and then do a little black pudding too. Yeah, get it back into frame. Sorry, folks, I pulled that down so I could actually see what I was painting. It's a wee thing. It is. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I would love to have a mini of Ben, but I don't know anyone who could 3D model it for me. Or even print it because I don't have a resin printer. Mm hmm. Oh, um, yeah, graphics. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I've got a, a bookstore. Don't make that face at me. I need the SDL still. Are you going to design it? I see that face panda made at me. <laughs> oh, God. Yes, but we need the SDL first. I, I don't know how to do 3D modeling. I, I love the fact that instead of even using your own scary emote, you just did the old school emoji at me. Mm -hmm. That was hilarious. Straight up old school approach. Go for it. Oh. Zero's plotting. Oh no. Zero is plotting. <laughs> Zero's been doing some 3D printing too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is great to see. Zero also has a YouTube channel that is just up and running. That addresses a lot of stuff in terms of mini painting and terrain building and all that goodness. And uh, he actually was just working on a from the ground up sculpt of a mimic. Mm, that's right. And it came out looking really cool. Or at least the most recent picture that I saw is looking really cool. I liked it a lot. Wow, Panda was like, fine, I got your stare emote right here. <laughs> Challenge with accepted. Friends, right, with friends like these, folks, with friends like these. Right? You got it. All right, and then while we're painting, are don't forget, folks, if you haven't unlocked Fen yet, get yourself over to Idle Champions uh, after we're done with our stream here. Check it out and unlock Fen during midwinter if you have not yet already. And then go to the in-game shop because we have some really cool looking skins. Um, there's a theme pack for Fen, Vampiric Dark Lord Fen. And it comes with the adorable Izzy the Vampire Bat, Bat and this fantastic skin for Fen. And there's also the Vampire Hunter, Hunters Beetle and Grim skin and feet pack. And then my lovely champion, Vornika has the Barovia Visitor skin and feet pack that's come out. So check that all out this week and have some fun with it. Love to see the formations you're coming up with, especially now as we're getting closer and closer to the Black Dice Society formation, getting close to completed. But I just want to make sure I mention that because we're getting towards our last half hour here for Paint and Slay, believe it or not. That time is going. Right? Look at the time. Look at the time. All right. Just, just a little spot down here. Let me do, do, do. Uh, I'm guessing the silver is for the one eye of the Modron. The silver is actually going to go dry brushed onto the top of the spear as well as, um, really, I'm going to leave the eye up to you to see what you want to do with that one. Oh, because looking at the yeah. packaging, I thought it was the white. Mm, no. Oh, no. That's... Oh, it looks like it's got a weird little like eye, like the pupils looking the wrong way. Mm, yeah. Yeah, the art's a little mm. bit wonky there. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take Dead Flesh, which is this kind of limey green tone. Oh, yeah. This needs a wee bit of a shake, too. Yeah, it definitely needs a little shake, 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 sonora. Do, 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 do. And that's all I should have gotten the paint shaker and plugged it in over here. You know, I am tempted to get one of those... You can get one um, 3D printed for your power drill. And then you pop it into the power drill and you just... And it is supposed to shake it up. 
But anyways, we're going to put oh. dead flesh onto the base. So oh. the funny thing is it looks very lime green in the bottle, but once it's out of the bottle, it's actually just this nice spring green. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. Yep. Oh, I keep picking up the dry brush because it looks like a regular brush. Oh, fair. Totally fair. Here, dry brush, please stop confusing me. So I'm just going to put this onto the base, give everything a chance to dry, because now we're going to go in and we're going to start dry brushing those metallics on. Yeah, this looks like key lime pie in the palette. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Yeah. But I like it for, oop, get it back in frame. But I like it as a nice starter for a base, just to kind of change it up a little bit so everything doesn't look like it's on gray stone. Yeah, I actually um started getting terrain bits for bigger mm -hmm. pieces. Nice. Um, you know, the giant uh, red adult dragon? Mm-hmm. I... The one I bought at Gen Con many, many years ago, I finally put it together. Ooh. And uh, even though the base is already kind of busy with the treasure and stuff from the Dragon Horde, I still put mm -hmm. a little bit of terrain on it. Oh, nice. There's actually, um, speaking of Treasure Horde, if you want to find, or if you want to add what looks like gold uh, coins to the bottom of your bases, but have it be super easy, Plaid Crafts has a paint that has these little circular flecks of glitter in the paint itself and when you start to layer it on it looks like piles of gold or you can make it look like a scattering of gold depending on how you paint it onto the base oh that's fun it is so super handy to have i've put it to use a few times with a lot of my um finishing up dragon miniatures yeah the my challenge now is is actually getting the wings to stay together because it is mm. hefty it is, yeah it's hefty and only green stuff has worked so far oh you actually uh hold like everything together uh-huh oh wow then there's the challenge of where do i put it once it's actually done yeah display place well the tiamat that was his was generous enough to send me is on a shelf behind me yeah, mine um, is living to the side, up on a high bookcase. But she is massive. My goodness. Yeah, and I thought, I for a split second, I actually thought about buying the unpainted one. Yeah, Lauren wants to do that one. <laughs> I was like, so that's my painting project for a year if I buy it. Mm-hmm. That is just a, yep. That is a lot of mini to paint up. Not yeah, that I'm complaining, is. but that's that's a huge time commitment for sure. And space once you're done. Yeah, with that, that would have to be a, I sit at the dining table and bring my laptop and use that for painting. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, definitely. Okay, I'm trying to work between all these feet and legs right now. Yeah, I'm leaving the edge of the base alone just so I can hold it because I did not. Yeah. I was not smart and didn't put it on a. That's a okay. Handle. Right. There is that. Let's see here. Do, do, do. Yeah, Awkwardish Panda. It's it's a really cool paint. Um, I'll see if I can find it after we're done with this stream and I'll take a picture of the product and I'll put it up on my Twitter um, so all my lovely fellow mini painters can see what I'm talking about. I'm telling you. It is Chef Kiss Wonderful. Do I actually have, where is my little, I don't think it's up here. I have like this cute little pile of gold for one of my little wormlings and I don't think it's up here. Otherwise I would show you what the end result looks like. Okay, Aww. so this is where we are at now. Okay. So let's move on to getting some of that copper. This is where we're gonna have some fun. So it's just straight up metallic copper and we're gonna use that dry brush that came in that paint set. Um, and we're going to dry brush copper. this. Yeah. We're going to do this on the places where we did the leather brown, basically. Uh -huh. And on these um, little black tips here that will also get the uh, copper. So it looks like a different type of metal. 
Oh, nice. Yeah. So let me get this is a tight package. Yeah, that one struggled a little bit, but at least I got it open. Mm-hmm. Let me put you back. All right. Okay. Bag you. Okay. Go to the side. All right, dry brush, it's finally your time. Do do do. Yeah, you can actually pick it up now. <laughs> and it counts. Yeah, it's I'm used to the dry brushes having a different texture. Mm-hmm. Um, so I keep picking up things that like a quote unquote regular brush. Yeah, that's fair. All right, so I'm just okay. gonna go through and start. Remember, dry brush is this technique where you load some of that paint onto the tip of the brush and then you drag it across to start bringing out details of the miniature. And when you do it with a metallic, it ends up creating this sort of beat up metal look instead. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I've never thought of that. Yep. So let me get this one leg all done up and I will show you how it looks in comparison. So see you have that's with the copper on wow. it and then that's a leg well, that doesn't have it. All right. Isn't that fun? Yeah. I'm just trying to also be careful because I'm still even after that first stream that I joined you and Lauren on, I'm still mm. going to have you hand it when it comes to dry brush. That's fair. I mean, and luckily with this metallic factor, it's also something where even if you do get a little bit more heavy handed, it won't look off. If yeah. you do. Although I might switch to one of my smaller dry brushes. This one's got a little bit of a wider reach to it than I need. So I'm going to switch yeah. to one of my smaller ones. Yeah, this was the one thing I didn't grab. I did not grab a different dry brush for. Okay. I should have. Yeah, I'm going to a wee one. You said the tip of the spear too, right? Uh, the tip of the spear is going to be silver. Oh, okay. We're about to get to that one. Oh. You okay? Oh yeah, I'm good. Oh. I just, I'm like, all right, these these aging luxury orbs. <laughs> I love that aging luxury orbs. I mean, it's not wrong. It's an accurate description. That is for sure. Luxury orbs, luxury bones. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. Starting off with the legs first to see if it helps. <laughs> there are so many angles on these. I know. Some of the other dry brushes I picked up are They've got a round head on them, not a mm -hmm. flat head. And I found that I found that to give uh, interesting results from a different bit from this. Yeah. It gives more of a simple, I think. Yeah. It definitely can help in that respect. All right. I think I have brushy brushy. And that I really don't know where that came from. I started saying brushy brushy brushy. Brushy brushy, brushy. brushy. I like that though. I know I, I just couldn't tell you. Motion. <laughs> I know I just could not tell you where it came from. Well, wherever it came from, I'm enjoying it. Hello, yeah. Captain Juden Voss. <laughs> he just jumped in and said, Thanks to the streamers for sharing with us. Always happy to share with you all. There we go. How you doing over there? Oh, pretty good. Just trying to get the uh the edges of our little Modron buddy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Top. That is fair. 
that's interesting because I had not thought about like how to get kind of a a corrupted slash you know rusty look for them. Yeah, I was um. It's like, well, if it's if they're metallic, but they're also moving around and doing stuff, they're not going to be perfectly polished in silver or gold all the time. So I wanted to kind of play off having the copper option and kind of go more for a worn look. Maybe that's where I got it from, and it was just in the back of my brain. Uh, Pirate said, that antenna with friends familiar... This makes me think of that one old gift of the bat being groomed with a toothbrush going brushy, brushy, brushy. Brushy, brushy. Oh, there you go. I wonder if that's where it was. It was just stuck in the back of my brain. There's also that th- that scene in Greece when they're at the sleepover party. Brush ya, brush ya, brush ya. Brush yourself too first. Oh my god, I have not thought of Greece in how many years? Your subconscious has come to play now. It has, because... <laughs> That has to be where that was lurking somewhere in the back of my brain. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to do this on the handle of the spears. Okay. Because I just got some on there and I actually like how that looks. I'm going to leave the tip of the spear for silver. All right. Oh, that works. Yeah, I like how that looks. I love Ooh. There we go. Yeah. I'm going to clean my card brush. Bum, bum, bum. And prep for the silver. Yeah. Okay, so chat, again, if you have questions for us, we're always happy to answer questions. Just make sure you put in caps, question, and then colon, and then your question. And that'll make it easier for our fantastic moderators, Sean and Mars, to catch and pop it into the question doc that we have going for today. Hey, that's the wash you said over there. Hmm? The Funny how. Yeah, I'm trying to like as we move use stuff, like move it to the side. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It definitely helps. Yeah, although I must say I do love the case that the paints come in. Oh, the case is awesome. It's so helpful to have. Just put everything back in place. And there you go. Um I am loving them, Panda. They come in the nice case. So, mm-hmm. you know, kind of like how um, Painting Pirate brought painting to do while we were at TwitchCon. Mm-hmm. And that made it so much easier. Yeah. So something like that. I may even take it with me on my trip next week. Ooh, that's a fun idea. If I can find something that I could, like, scary and something to paint that is not gonna like I'm not gonna be too worried about it being crushed in a suitcase or if I just want to put it in my backpack mm-hmm. oh wow my back oh yeah don't forget to uh stretch every so often yes uh and I missed it earlier but pirate said well you have picked up my diseased shrimp comment because <laughs> he has often said he's just like a disease shrimp yeah. All right. We're getting there. This little fellow is getting there. But yeah, don't forget if you're painting your minis to stop and stretch every so often. I'm definitely going to be stretching once we are done and moving around. All right. I'm going to go through more of this. I'm almost there. Yeah. I've, Again, I've it's got all these the legs and arms. All the wheel of arms and legs are a pain. Mm-hmm. This, if Lauren was here, she'd be talking about how um, the remoras that we did. <laughs> that was oh, just, yeah. oh my gosh, all the legs, all the elbows slash knees, whatever body part we wanted to call those. Oh no, that would I'd still be here. I'd yeah. still be here painting. Oh, that 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 was a long time working on those angles and those sections of the body. For sure. Have you ever come across a mini where you just like, you know what? I'm good. <laughs> I'm not gonna keep focusing on um, this anymore. The Hydra. The Hydra? Fair. Because the Hydra is the body and nine separate heads and the spines <gasps> are all very sharp. 
Oh. I actually, I actually put down a silicone mat. Uh huh. Um, got like um, you know, like examination gloves. I keep a pack of them. Mm-hmm. Put those on and just slathered it. I just stopped like trying to be super finicky. Uh huh. And because I based it in black or gray. Okay. And then I just used contrast paints on it, and I just got the biggest brush I have, and just covered it and just uh-huh. went over each, like laid each head out, because that was too much. And I was like, I'm going to have like pinpricks in my hand if I don't stop. Mm-hmm. And I think I actually cut the gloves by the time we were done. I, I, I think it. I've got my little buddy. I think I've got him as dry brushed as he can be right now. All right. Cool. I got a little bit of copper on top of the eye, but looking at that, I think that's savable because that's where the white of the eye is going to go. I think I'm pretty oh. much done as well. I have missed. I'm playing the did I get that part or not? I think I might have missed this side. Yeah. So let also me just. Let me... Yeah, I forgot to do this. Let side. me get the dry brush actually get paint out of it because I've encountered that where you don't use a dry brush. Oh, and then it just, yeah, spreads the paint around elsewhere of a different color you don't want. Yeah. Yep. Been there. Done that in the past. Ooh, Rinsing your brush between paints is always a good idea. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Ooh. Question. Did you ever think the Black Dice Society would get as famous and as much loved as it has become? And have your characters and idol champions? The best D&D show in my honest opinion. I love everything about it. That came from Kalith Maron. I, mean, uh, I don't know how famous we are, so... That's just it. I'm like, I'm not sure what the measurement of fame is, but... Um, um I don't know. I don't know how to answer that, because honestly, I don't know what a measurement of fame is. Like, no one's coming up to us the way they do for, like, other shows. Mm-mm. Not all of us get the same amount of fan attention, fan art, etc. So, I don't know that I would say we're famous like that. Um, I'm glad you enjoy the show. I know you were there in chat every week. Um... But I don't go into any project expecting or thinking it's going to be famous or whatever. Yeah. I do it because I, in this case, I enjoy everybody. I, mostly everybody I, I played with and we got to tell a great story. got to play with B. Dave at the helm. And, you know, I got to spend time every week with people I like. So that was my bonus. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I was excited about the concept of the project itself. That's that's what yeah. I was really eager to have explored and play out something darker D and D type of thing. Um, yeah. So the fact that it was well received for me that was great. That was wonderful to see people responding to. Oh, I'm so creeped out! Oh my gosh, I love the storyline. That that to me was like, yes, please give me more of that. Um, yeah. As for there being champions here and idol champions, heck no. No one. If someone, so I'm going to say this and I'm going to sound like a little bit of a downer, <laughs> but but this is for anyone who does content creation, especially RPG stuff. Mm-hmm. If your goal going into a thing, be it a project, something you're creating, something you plan to sell, and your goal is fame and fortune, stop right there. Yeah. You're not doing it for the right reason. And I already had a character in Idol Champions, and we didn't expect that either. When CNE reached out, we did not expect that. And it's amazing. It's a great honor. But I never do any project, anything I do with the expectation of fame and fortune, because that is the wrong reason to do it. Mm -hmm. You want to be passionate about what you're doing. You want to be interested in what you're doing. You want to be willing to share what you're doing. But if you go in there thinking like, I'm going to get the dollar dollar bills and I'm going to be famous and I'm going to get thousands upon thousands upon thousands of followers, you're setting yourself up for disappointment and you're not leaving yourself open for an experience that could be something memorable down the line Mm -hmm. so yeah definitely don't go into it looking at it that way yeah same with twitch streaming same with doing any rpg content or you know getting on twitch or whatever or youtube or anything else and thinking this is gonna this is gonna be my big break Mm -hmm. spoiler it's not no like quite frankly i've had people come up to me and say oh so what's it like to be famous now and first of all makes me very uncomfortable. I am not famous. I am notable. People might know who I am in a very, very small sphere of this world. Um, I think we throw famous around a little bit too much as a thing. Oh my God, (gasps) yes. 
I'm a Kelly. A Kelly. <laughs> like how both of us are like, wait, hello, Kelly. Don't forget we have Kelly in the chat. Now she helped us create Scotty the Rescue Pup. And while we yes. were chatting, I also put silver onto the tops of those. Sponges. Oh, I, I have my silver on. I was just awesome. waiting to see what was next and giving my hand a rest. Sweet. All right. So next what we're going to do is we're going to go back to that face and we're going to take bone white and we're going to dry brush the face with bone white. Okay. Oh, that's banshee white, not bone white. Yeah. There we go. The bone. A wild Kelly appears. Yeah. And Kelly, uh, thanks to user Jester, has mm. now done her first mini painting. I am thrilled painting. to hear that one. That is fantastic. See, I'm just going to take that bone white and... This is why I'm waiting on the eyes and everything. I'm just going to carefully give the face a little bit more depth and interest by adding in that dry brush. And if you happen to get this onto the metal, that's okay. It'll translate into sort of a patina. Mm. Yeah, and, you know, I think there's a great conversation to be had about the idea of fame mm -hmm. and the perception of fame or even just having, quote unquote, made it. Mm -hmm. in our space because yeah. oh i totally got that on the metal oh well it's a patina now because you're also gonna don't forget you have a wash going on over this too so that'll help oh yeah i just i am not i am basically clumsy so <laughs> i was able to get all three faces with one round of dry brush though so. that's good yeah like i said i'm still heavy-handed but right now that's working in my favor Oh, and Kayla, you did not make, I'm personally, I'm not uncomfortable about it. I think this is an important conversation for people to have. Um, because if you keep quiet about it, then people run around with this expectation of fame and fortune. And it's like reality check, not so much. Um, so no, it, I think it was a perfectly okay question to ask. It's just uh, fame is a funny thing. Yeah, and people equate being notable, like you said, to fame. I am not famous. And if I ever got to a point where I couldn't, like, step out and go to Target in peace, I would move. I wouldn't fake mm -hmm. my death like that author did, but I would move. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Did you hear about that, V? <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> that was... What? An Ooh. author faked her death. Bruce via suicide to make it worse horrible story yeah like oh and then two years later was like i'm here and i'm like what I'm like funny story everyone I'm like no that was no that was no I, i'm with the zero jester that was a piece of mm, that did not approve of mm -mm. Nope, yeah. nope, nope. okay so now what i'm gonna do is just while we have a little bit of time left i'm gonna go back to just some straight up leather brown and dry brush the base around the feet dry brush the what the base oh, okay so let me get some plain leather brown yeah just straight oh, up that's plain copper. leather brown i mean you could do copper it's just gonna be an interesting looking shiny base yeah just with the label faced away yeah oh yeah they are very similar to each other i'm also trying to be careful since you don't need that much for dry brushing and you not really like don't. yeah like put one or two drops versus squeezing mm -hmm. the bottle really hard yeah. Just a smattering. Was that Winnie the Pooh oh, yeah. that talked about a smattering? Yes. Um, and there are people who just also, and you know, and I've talked about this, I've talked about it in terms of, uh, you know, parasocial relationships. Mm -hmm. We brought it up a little bit yesterday when I was talking to Trevor and I brought it up during the stream to unlock and show off Ben, is that a lot of people see what they think think is a great life and don't realize how isolating it can be how people will use you mm -hmm. um and how you know we have friends who have shifted companies they're still in the space but it's been very clear once they shifted companies who talked to them just because they worked at one place and now not at the other yeah or um that's why like you know and this isn't this is not a humble brag this is just a statement of fact like when I go to LA and if I'm lucky enough to get a chance to hang out with Matt, I don't share those photos anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't talk about it very much. Or I wait or I wait until I'm home and have been home. And you still get the people that think, oh, you're famous. 
Mm-hmm. Well, what's it like to hobnob? And I'm like, okay, first off, that's not how I treat my friends, you weirdo. Yeah. But secondly, um, this person is my actual friend. I don't know right. what you think you're doing. Yep. You know, like you and B Dave and, and the people we see who respond with, must be nice. And I'm like, to have good friends, yes, yes, it is. I hope mm-hmm. you get the same. Yeah, exactly. Um, like, may you stop being bitter. Yeah. It's it's easy to make judgments from a distance when you don't know the full story behind the scenes and everything going on. And it all boils down hey, to Dan. people are people. They are humans. Those screen names, those handles, they have emotions. They have reactions. They have thoughts and ideas. And it's very easy to forget that when you're applying to at so-and-so, that at so-and-so is a person with a heart and a mind and everything like that. So... Hey, Dan. Um, so, yeah, just keep that in mind when you're interacting with people on the interwebs. And, uh, yeah. Boy, was that a topic to shift to right before the end. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. And we and we, tra- we actually had a similar transition yesterday when we were talking um, in my stream. Like, that last half hour became, like, kind of more let the game run and let's just mm-hmm. talk. Yeah. Um, and it came up with Trevor, too, because... And, and I likened it to people who are... Like, now we have way too much accessibility to the people we watch online, Mm -hmm. streams or whatever, you know, actors are on Twitter, what have you. Right. But people don't see them as people. They are personas. They are something to achieve. Like, even when I shared the date for Fen to come to the game, Mm -hmm. somebody quote tweeted and said, oh, this is my goal. Hold on. Why is this your goal? Why can't you just say congrats? Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's it's definitely a thing. Um, so at this point, what I'm going to do and what you're free to do as well, Tanya, is do mm-hmm. the umber wash on okay. the golden brown parts and then the black wash on the spears. OK, so I'm uh... going to do the umber on the body and the black wash on the spears. We're actually to the point where we have to start wrapping up, believe it or not. No. Um, so it's wash point. And then what I'll do is I will send you, Tanya, the um, information for finishing up the eyes and the lips or the mouth. I should okay. say. And Did I not grab the umber wash? Am I that's that totally. Person? We're not going to do it on stream right now, but basically this is where I'm going to let it dry a little bit more, but we'll do the wash on the body with an umber wash to kind of give it a goldeny tone and then do mm-hmm. the black wash on the spears to kind of keep that nice darker tone going. And then for the base, you can always go in with a brown wash or you could do a black wash depending on which of those tones you want it to go. If you want it more gray, you can go with black wash. If you want it more brown, you can do the brown wash. Shocker. Um, yeah, and then it'll just I be just... a matter of finishing up the eyeballs and the lips and the little teeth on this face. Yeah, <laughs> I just grabbed entirely the wrong wash. So yeah, good job. But, but I can do that. We only have nine minutes, so I can Not do even, because we have to jump off before formation save comes on after us. So we actually have to start oh, wrapping wow. this up now. So I am so glad you and I got to sit down and chat and paint again. Okay. It has been far too long. I have missed it dearly. We got to try and do this more. Yes. Time. <laughs> yes. Um, so rando thing we're trying to do. Uh, some of us who do mini painting, we're trying to figure out a way to do like basically a paint and sip, but on Twitch. Ooh, fun. I like this. Um, because guest star is there. And now you can do screen share with it. Mm-hmm. So trying to figure out a way to kind of do do that with guest star. So like three people painting and then three screen shares if it's possible. Ooh. That's neat. I like that idea. Well, if that if that comes around and you figure it out, let me know. Because I'd love to hang out and paint with people. It's always my thing. Always. <laughs> All right. Don't forget. Log in. Get Fen. Unlock. Midwinter. Fun stuff. New skins. Yay! And then stick around and you can catch Formation Stave coming soon after this. And everyone, have a fantastic weekend. Uh, Lauren will be back next week, as will I. And we're going to have fun doing a Dahani custom paint uh, where we're going to make it look like the Spelljammer skin that has come out that Latia helped design with us. So, yeah, tune in next week for that one. Until then, everyone, take care and have a great one. Bye-bye.